Good afternoon, uh, and Yali Mother, to all of you who have joined us today. Thank you so much uh, for being part of this Heritage Webinar series. Uh, we welcome all of our folks who have joined us from the UK jurisdiction, but also um, our friends and our fellow travelers on this learning journey from other jurisdictions that are now part of this call. Thank you so much uh, for joining this uh, Heritage Webinar series today. In terms of this, this webinar, we would be recording this webinar uh, for folks who weren't able to join today. And throughout the webinar, we would be using uh, slides along with the audio and video of the speakers that would be go on. Before we start today's webinar, I also want to thank our team who had put an extraordinary effort uh, to keep the series going. Uh, I particularly want to thank uh, Mariam Saleh, who is with us today, uh, uh, Rafiq Ajani, Anju Malam, and Amalim Mak. All of their efforts were uh, significant in putting this webinar together. So this is the third webinar that we are um, doing together uh, and in some ways that as you know that this webinar series aims to um, see the relationship between faith and heritage. In the first webinar, as many of you would recall, we tried to look at Conference of Birds as an example of uh, Muslim devotion and ethical literature uh, through which we were trying to make this connection of faith and heritage. In the second webinar with Dr. Wafi Momin, we were able to um, to expand our understanding through discussing poetry from bhakti, Sufi, and Gnanic literatures. The third webinar, we are taking a, another interesting tangent, uh, which would be uh, through performing arts, and how do we see this relationship of faith and heritage through performing arts? And this would be another important uh, dimension, I think, that, that uh, would give a new uh, um, avenue for the heritage series to work around with. Um, this idea of performing arts and religion is not something new. The relationship goes back centuries and centuries. Uh, the relationship uh, between this idea of what we call uh, concept of religion and theater, both in somehow, in my humble opinion, both gives meaning to human experience and human existence in some ways. Both has something integral to do with human imaginations and fostering that have, while having greater roots in the culture. So with this note, uh, I hope today's webinar would enlighten us with these connections. And today we will be uh, focusing on Ali to Karim, a tribute to the Smiley Imams, which was a play uh, uh, that was uh, put up during the Golden Jubilee time. I hope uh, as part of this immersive learning series, everyone was able to go through the program brochure and a short highlights video that was made available to you. Uh, like all the other webinars, uh, we would like our participants to go through the materials before so that they come prepared to this discussion. So thank you for taking time out to uh, going through both these resources and thank you for, to Hafiz and Salima for sharing that. Uh, the agenda for today would work in a way that we would start uh, with uh, Hafiz sharing his thoughts about uh, this production and then uh, Salima would uh, share her thoughts and then at the end of this uh, discussion we would have chance to uh, have some questions for both of them and generate some kind of an informal discussion together. So on this note let me introduce to you both our speakers today. Uh, our first speaker, Hafiz Karmali, a number of you would have seen him and uh, heard him when he was with us uh, in our first Heritage Series webinar with Farooq, uh, where Hafiz talked about his play around Conference of Birds. So thank you, Hafiz, for joining in. Hafiz, uh, after pursuing his Master's of Fine Arts in Directing, Hafiz had uh, served an apprenticeship at the American Repertory Theatre at Harvard. He then embarked on his career as an international theatre director. The UK Jamaat would recall uh, the two plays that uh, Hafiz uh, had directed at the Smiley Centre, the Conference of Birds and the uh, Island of Animals. And I hope a number of people who are part of this call would have uh, fond memories of that experience um, that they had. As part of the events of Maulana Hazir Mam's Golden Jubilee in 2007, Hafiz presented Ali to Karim, a tribute to the Smiley Imams, which is the subject of our webinar today. Over the years, Hafiz has directed several plays in various locations and also worked on special projects for AKTC, 
UNESCO and help establish focused humanitarian assistance in Afghanistan. Hafiz is live with us today from Tunisia. Thank you so much, Hafiz, for taking time out today. And it's always a pleasure to connect with you and hear to your experience. Thank you, Hafiz, for joining today. Our second speaker uh, today would be Salima Bhakia, who was appointed as the head of the Department of Communications and Development at the Institute of Smiley Studies in 2016. Uh, she is responsible for the external and internal communications at the Institute currently. Prior to this, Salima worked as an independent producer and a stage manager in Fringe Theatre as a producer and production manager in indie film and TV, as well as a producer of live events. During Maulana Hazir Imam's Golden Shubli, it was her professional capacity as an arts producer that Salima was privileged to co-produce Ali to Karim with director Hafiz Karmali, and also worked on archive-based film installations, which form part of Rays of Light, Light exhibition. And I hope a number of us remember that exhibition uh, and have some um, memories associated with that as well. Over the years, Salima has served in various senior leadership positions in the Smiley community, most recently as a member of the International Task Force for the Communications and Public Relations as part of Maulana Hazir Imam's Diamond Jubilee celebrations. And before this, as the chairman of ITRAB UK, uh, Salima is an alumni of the IAS graduate program in Islamic Studies and Humanities, class of 1999. She has a Bachelor's of Arts in Theatre Studies and an MPhil in Social Anthropology. Thank you so much, Salima, uh, for joining us today uh, and taking time out. And with both of you, I think it would be an exciting learning journey to hear your experiences uh, uh, that, that are so unique. As, as a Jamaat, we weren't able to have this play here, but having you both today with the Jamaat, it means a lot. Uh, and your insights to the play is like living that memory again. So over to you, Hafiz, and looking forward to hearing both of you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, your mother, everyone. Um, Thank you, Fahim, for thank you to you, to you and your whole team for organizing this uh, webinar. Um, please interrupt me if you if you can't hear me or uh, anything. But um, so I thought um, before starting uh, getting into the details of Ali to Karim, the program we organized for the Golden Jubilee, I would start uh, in the year 2000 A.D. Our, our story actually began in London. Uh, there I was uh, attending Jamaat Khanna at the Ismaili Center, and I ran into uh, Shafiq Sasdina. And uh, he invited me to dinner, and uh, moments later there we were at uh, Nando's in Earl's Court, and enjoying our spicy chicken. And this is 2000. Uh, seven years before the Golden Jubilee, and so I, I happened to just mention to him, hey Shafiq, what, what do you think we should do for Hazi Imam's Golden Jubilee in 2007? And without a beat, he just said, um, I'd like you to look at uh, Ismaili history. And I said, uh, you mean uh, the Imams? And he said, uh, yes. And I said, well, I think it's been done before. And he said, no, 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 I'd like, I'd like a professional production. So that was my cue, really, to uh, embark on uh, a lot of preparation and research. Um, the first thing I did was enroll uh, at the Sorbonne University in Paris, and I studied with uh, uh, the people in the department, the people that had uh, worked with Henri Corbin, the great philosopher who specialized in uh, Ismaili philosophy, and then his successors uh, like uh, Christian Jambé. And soon enough, you discover that um, Ismaili history can be divided into seven episodes. Uh, the period from Hazrat Ali up to Imam Jafar Sadiq and Imam Ali Ismail uh, can be termed early Ismailism. And then uh, the next phase is known as Dor al Satra, when the Imams kept a low profile in Salamiya in Syria due to persecution, until the moment arrived when Imam al Mahdi emerged in, in uh, Tunisia, in uh, a town where I'm actually speaking to you from, which is known as Al Mahdiya. 
and, and began what became the golden age, the Fatimid golden age. There were four Imams who lived in, uh, in Madia, Imam al Qaim, Mansur, well, Mahdi, Qaim, Mansur, and Imam al Muiz, until Imam al Muiz moved on to establish Cairo. Uh, and then uh, several Imams later, we will discuss these in a little more detail when you get to see some production photographs. There was a dispute over succession and Hassan bin Sabah, many of you of course will have heard of the renowned Hassan bin Sabah, uh, enabled the Imams to move from Egypt to uh, Iran and establish a network of castles, the famous ones uh, Alamut and Lamsar. And um, during this time of research that I was doing, I felt a real need to actually go to these places and visit our Ismaili heritage sites. So um, I went to Egypt, uh, Cairo, and even Aswan, where Maulana Sultan Mahmoud is buried. And then in Iran, I visited the castles. And when, when it's safe again to travel, I would highly recommend uh, a visit to Alamut and especially Lamsar, because you can actually touch the stone. And there is something quite miraculous about reconnecting with our Ismaili history, especially the Nizari phase. Uh, after 1256, when the Mongols invaded Alamut and burned down the library and destroyed the castles and so on, uh, the Imams re-emerged in southern Iran, uh, where they uh, became known as uh, masters among the Sufi masters. And simultaneously, this was a long period of time, uh, you can find uh, Ismailism in Central Asia and of course uh, in India in a form known as Satpant. Uh, after the Imams uh, established connections between India and Iran, there were tributes being paid to the to the imams until this modern phase which you're probably more familiar with which is the Aga Khan first second and third Maulana Sultan Mahmud Shah and uh, until now a long period of imamate uh, 1957 which is when the Takmashini of Maulana Haz Imam took place so um, we divided Ismaili history into seven episodes and uh, in preparation for the play um, I had to go through a kind of uh, process. Uh, this is a typical process where uh, you, after that moment of having the idea and uh, then going to the heritage sites, there's a long phase of research, collecting stories and then developing them into a storyboard, kind of like a filmmaker does. And then through improvisation, which is with actors in a workshop, uh, devising a script. When do you hear us talking about devising a script? That's a form uh, of a process when you don't have a really a ready-made script. So this is when you work with actors, you give them a story or a text, and then you improvise with the actors in rehearsal, and gradually you end up having some dialogue. Uh, sometimes it's as, as uh, practical as having a laptop in rehearsal and having the actors write it out. Uh, now, in this particular phase, Salima played a key role in finding a very important um, uh, resource, uh, which is a, a, a screenplay writer, a writer who had a lot of experience in writing films, and he collaborated with me in, in developing the script. I would tell him the stories, he would write the dialogue, or, or uh, the actors and I would develop the text, and then we would send it off to him, and he would polish the, the script. Um, once we had a, a script, we were able to move into the next phase, which is to recruit the production staff. And here, uh, Salima helped uh, look online for the appropriate set designer, costume designer, props, uh, the designers with whom, or should I say designers that would have a similar style as I preferred, an aesthetic. Uh, you could find a whole wide range of designers, but would they have the same understanding of, of theater as I, I had? Um, once we got to this phase, we were able to hold auditions, and um, this was quite an extensive phase. We, we, uh, we hired six professional actors in London, 
and eventually four actors from the Jamaat, all from all across the USA, because our tour was going to begin in the USA. Uh, and then began the really extensive full-time rehearsal period in, in London, uh, six weeks. And I let Salima tell you more about the um, rehearsal hall. I won't let her forget because it's quite special. Um, eventually we, we traveled to Los Angeles for our technical rehearsal, our dress rehearsal, and um, the previews and the premiere of the show taking place in, uh, at the Redondo Beach Theater in Los Angeles. Now, as I was mentioning about the research, to get more specific, um, uh, of course, we, we, we cited the Holy Quran, we recited devotional literature, Ginan and Qasida, and I had gathered chronicles of uh, what the Imams had done, because of course, as you must um, realize, the focus here was really on the Imam's biography. Uh, I believe Dr. Dafter is going to be soon publishing a book uh, which actually uh, chronicles the imam's lives. Um, then we also use poetry. The beauty of poetry is that it's open to several levels of interpretation. And when you're creating a piece on stage, rehearsing it, you're basically writing poetry for the stage. Uh, and then what you write on stage is open to interpretation, but the director uh, works with actors and stages the text in a way that makes the text come across as clearly as possible. But then he's also in a way uh, a poet of the stage if he's, if he's inspired. Huh? Uh, um, sometimes I turn to myths and legends. You know, there are so many legends of the assassins uh, and not that we, we told them as, as written, but sometimes we would question them through our characters. There's a novel treatment, a novelistic treatment of Imam al-Hakim and so we would, we would really uh, turn towards all the sources, including critical studies and philosophy. And more modern times, we had uh, archaeology in Egypt, uh, archives, recordings. Our, among many of your families may have these 78 uh, recordings or 33 recordings and videos, of course. We, we had a wide range of sources to work with. Um, here, we, we decided to set the play in a, in a library because of many reasons. One, of course, is that the Ismailis are an intellectual tradition. Another is that we wanted to show that everything we presented was uh, stories based on sources. And, and then eventually the table and the chairs, the books, they all became props that became part of our action. So actors would climb upon the chair or um, when we were traveling across across this, uh, Central Asia to go into these lands for the Dai, the chairs became stepping stones and they were traveling across nations, across the Silk Route. And so chairs and tables are a very useful prop for uh, a, a kind of choreography of a kind of experimental style of theater, not really a realistic style of theater. And now the techniques we used were are quite well known in storytelling. We had these two poets who were our main narrators, and here they're actually reading a poem from uh, Imam Mustan Sibila's uh, uh, Javan Mard. Uh, but, but in this sense, I wanted to show you that they are key storytellers, and then we would enact the stories that, as they describe them. Here they are describing the event at Gadir -e Kum. As many of you know, this is the moment when Prophet Muhammad declares, Man Puntu Mola Fa Ali Mola. And what we did was we also made it into a kind of Beit Alim class where children are reenacting the story. And uh, the projection on the back is actually the recit is actually the text of Man Kuntumola. Projections you'll see uh, became a very key, uh, really a key part of our production design. Then we also had this kind of comical professor that all of you academics, academics will, will appreciate. He would interrupt scenes with, with footnotes and references. And uh, on the right, we have a cartographer, a map maker, who would always tell us which country we were in and point out the location, exactly where Alamut can be found, and so on. Um, and then sometimes this is also, this was a very useful tool because the professor was also a, uh, keen to describe the etymology of uh, names, you know, the source of names. Now this is 
the etymology of Imam Zain al-Abidin, I think it's quite beautiful. Imam Zain al-Abidin was, he wrote a book of prayers and was known to be constantly in sajda, in prayer. And here you see his name can be broken down to this notion of ibadat, abada. And the professor would describe the fact and uh, translated, you could say, you could say that Zain al-Abidin means um, the ornament ornament of uh, worshippers or pa uh, ornament of piety. Sometimes the, the professor would actually draw out the genealogical chart of the Imam so we could see where there was a, a dispute in succession. Here uh, there's this large scale book again from the library and uh, it was turned by these two clown characters and then all of a sudden uh, a, pers a personality from Ismaili history steps out. Here Nasser Khosru is telling us uh, about uh, the Panjstan Park. Then we move into episode two, which is, um, uh, uh, as I was saying, the Doral Satra, the period of concealment. And um, uh, we specifically worked with the Surah 18 Al-Kaf, known as people of the cave in, cave in which the story of the seven sleepers is told. This French philosopher, uh, Louis Massignon, wrote a brilliant article in which he says that these seven sleepers hiding for 300 years due to persecution were kind of like a foretelling of a prefiguration of what happened in Ismaili history when the Imams did the same, keep a low profile. Now, um, so we staged this scene, um, uh, taking the painting, and actually recreating it on stage with, with uh, projections. By the way, our projection team was the best in London, a company known as Mesmer. Uh, here too, thanks to Salima, she found the best projection team in the UK. Um, the actors are dressed in exactly the same style as the painting. And, uh, and we tell the story of the seven sleepers. You can read the story in Surah 18. We used the text, in fact, from that Surah. The only unusual thing we did really was accompany it with uh, Oud, music from the lute uh, by Mozart. So you had this kind of juxtaposition of Quranic ayat with, uh, with the lyrical Oud. Uh, uh, um, I should mention before I move on that this, this period of the Doral Sutra was also the time when the Ikhwan al Safa wrote their 51 volumes and we staged the scene about them. They were a group of scholars known as the Brethren of Purity and they were affiliated with Ismaili leaders, Ismaili thinkers. Here now we are, we bring, we're into the moment of transition in Madia where, where I'm speaking to you from ironically, uh, drawn by the Mediterranean Sea. This was the moment when the Imam al-Mahdi and his prince, his son, Prince Qaim, uh, uh, arrive in Madia and are greeted. I, we, arranged, we found this poem, this kind of uh, welcome ode in which they're um, received in Madia and, uh, and um, uh, from here established the Fatimid Empire. In fact, I can, from where I'm speaking to now, I can see the Mediterranean Sea, quite, quite this view actually. Uh, we had the sound of the sea and, and the chorus uh, from Greek, Greek chorus, they're speaking a ode uh, in, in favor of the Imam, uh, basically praising the Imam. Then we're into the Fatimid period, the golden age, uh, Imam al-Mahdiya and so on. And now, um, just to point out one thing, it's very, very rich period of history, as you know, and we have volumes and volumes of history. But instead of staging every single moment, we decided to stage emblematic moments, which would give everyone an idea of what the Fatimids were like. So, for example, the renowned Majalis al-Hikmah, or Sessions of Wisdom, when the Da'i would teach, or, or the story of the invention of the fountain pen, Imam al Moiz was the one who inspired the invention of the fountain pen. That gives us an idea of the scientific uh, angle uh, uh, of the Fatimids. And then the Fatimid pageant is what we staged. This was an annual event uh, to celebrate Cairo. Here then is an example of uh, a Majalis al-Hikmah where uh, the poet is teaching the students about this esoteric uh, lesson in which he explains that you could you could consider the sun to be a symbol for Allah, 
and the moon to be a symbol for imamat. This is the Fatimid pageant, which we echo later in the AKDN pageant. We took a, an image of a soldier, a Fatimid soldier, and through our wonderful uh, projection artists, created an animation of soldiers. Then we're into episode four to give you some ideas. We, we told the story of Hassan Isaba and how he taught the degrees of initiation from Rafi to Lashkar and, and Fidai. And then a lovely scene um, uh, where we held a debate between Al Ghazali, the Sunni scholar, and, and Hassan, and Sab Hassan bin Sabah, and their debate about the role of Imamat. And why I'm quite uh, enamored of the scene is because after. Uh, reading that the, um, the, the, the leaders of Alamut used to communicate via a carrier pigeon. I staged this with um, a, an actress playing a bird and delivering little notes between Hassan, uh, Hassan and uh, Al-Ghazali. And then of course, uh, it becomes a kind of satire on Al-Ghazali, sorry to say, in which he gets quite furious because he loses the debate. And um, uh, Hassan bin Sabah proves that an imam is constantly required because he guides us on a daily basis. Um, then then uh, we moved into a kind of uh, more creative, uh, phase where we, we took artistic license where we had a juxtaposition of characters from real life today, modern um, 1900s, 20, 20th, well, 20th century. Freya Stark is an explorer, Ivanov is a Russian scholar, and Henri Korba is a French philosopher. We had them meet as if they could today uh, at the foot of Alamut and drink a cup of chai or, you know, out of a Russian samovar and debate uh, their views about Alamut. And eventually they, they bear witness to the invasion of the Mongols at the end of the Alamut phase. Um, here the professor reappears explaining something quite magical which is called Abjad, the science of letters. If you break down Alamut into its numerical values, it adds up to the actual date, 1090 AD of when it was established. Here is that uh, map maker I was telling you about here. She's showing up, uh, telling us where Alamut is and Lamsar for the Northwest. These are those uh, fictional, well, real characters actually from, from, from uh, the 20th century, Ivanov and Korba and uh, Freya Stark with their old fashioned camera. Now this is that moment where you see um, uh, Juvaini, this, uh, a rather uh, controversial figure, saving only the good books, like the Quran, and letting all the sacrilegious Ismaili books burn. Uh, and um, you see here then the projection of the flames, real books and projected books, and the actors are fighting uh, with using chairs and tables, and the battle becomes quite uh, like a choreography. Uh, episode five, the Imams re-emerge and one of the themes of Ali to Karim is that after persecution, there's always a moment of grace, like the Phoenix rises from the ashes. The Imams uh, move on to the to southern Iran, where I visited the tomb of Imam Mustan Sibila, the Jamaat Khanas in, in India being established by Pir Sadadin. We told the story of the legends of uh, Pir Shams using a uh, black and white silent film and then also visited the court of the Qajars. Here is Imam Mustan Sibila's tomb. I was using a table as a, as a su suggestion, but that's actually the in, inner, that's the interior of the tomb. Um, this is the Qajar court. Uh, messengers, the messengers are played by a kind of a, a, a team of puppets, but there you see the, the portrait of uh, Fatali Shah, who gave the title of Aga Khan to uh, Imam Hassan Ali Shah. This is the lovely scene uh, between uh, uh, three French characters uh, who had received, I had, I had received, I had a letter in French about, about the Aga Khan and his wealth. It was kind of a gossipy letter. So we staged it like that, as if it was a gossipy letter with these skirts and, and uh, like it was from a French classical play by Moliere. And um, quite a different style spoken in French accents. Then we move on to episode six. Oh yes, correct. Sorry, episode six, which you're probably more familiar with. Uh, and the source we really had was the memoirs of Molana Sultan Muhammad Shah, but we focused on his love of painting, poetry, ballet, 
opera and of course sports including golf and horse racing and then his uh, presiding over the League of Nations. Here we have Imam al-Sultan Mamusha's speech and the actors are listening to it. This is the speech that he made to the Muslim Ummah on one of those old fashioned phonographs that you wind. And then we're into um, episode seven. We read out uh, Maulana Sultan Mamacha's will in which he appoints Shah Karim. And then that takes us to uh, the Taknashini. But in, in this episode, we focused on uh, the AKDN's accomplishments and uh, had a whole pageant in red, with red and green flags. And then the homage ceremony, which took us to 11 July, 2007. Now in this, there's just one more thing to explain was one of the things I'd love to tell you about is that in this particular episode, we had footage, film footage of Duck Machini in the background live. And then in the foreground, we had the actors reenact the Munajat, Gali Kuba Mijala. So it was quite a devotional moment and truly a reenactment of uh, Molana Hazimam's enthronement ceremony. Finally, I'd just like to uh, point out uh, one uh, interesting statistic, which is that A2K Ali Karim toured seven cities in the USA, uh, LA, Dallas, Houston, Chicago, Miami, New York, and Atlanta. We had five shows per city for about uh, a total of 22,000 members of the Jamaat and their friends. And in doing so, we have to really acknowledge uh, all the, all, the, all the people who worked with us and enabled our dream to come true, uh, the Jubilee Consultation Group, JCG, with whom we had several meetings uh, to improve the work, the International Task Force, the E2K Project Leaders and National Committee, especially uh, Muki Saib Farooq Walji, uh, the cast and production staff, our USA donors, the Jamaat and volunteers, and for, the, for today's presentation, the photographs by Fares Rayani and Ali Ramji, and of course, Itreb Yuke and Fahim and his team. Okay, so I'll stop sharing there and uh, over to you, Salima and Fahim. I was gonna say before you stop sharing, but you've stopped sharing. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I wanted you to go back to one of your photographs, Hafiz, the one um, in the tomb of Mustansir, because you just took us on a really whistle-stop tour of of all seven episodes of the play and I'm not sure that everybody was able to take in all the details. Are you comfortable to share your screen again and just go back? I, yes, of course. I just thought I might be rushing. I mean that I might be, um, I thought I might be... Um, no, uh, we have lots of time. Oh, I was worried about time. No, we have lots of time. Okay, so... Um, I can't tell you what slide number it is but um you had um ivanov and the two poets and the table is the tomb yes and yes i just wanted to just draw people's oh. attention because although we had a lot of projections and used a lot of uh, archive material some of it and why we called this a historical docudrama i mean some of it was documentary and this um tomb and um the, the 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 film that's or the the interior of the tomb where you can see in the background where, which is where the ivanov and the poets are actually inside uh, the mausoleum you actually went to iran and part of as well as going to the sorbonne and enrolling um, in 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 uh, in research um you also traveled to egypt to iran you actually, you know, filmed in these places and we, we introduced some of that film footage. Um, so it's not quite archive, it was actual documentary um, footage. Yes. And I, I think it, you went through the photo so quickly, so I was just wanting to point some of that out. Do you want to say anything about that? No, yes, thank you, Salima. Um, if you eventually someday get to see the full f the production, you will see that in, in Cairo I took photographs and video of uh, the famous gates like Bab al-Futu and Bab al-Nasr and Bab al-Zuela and we we show them when we um, play the scene about how Cairo was established and then here uh, I went into all the actual tombs of the Imams Imam Mustan Sibila, Imam Garib Mirza. I'm sad to report that the, the tombstones in uh, 
Anjudan, Imam, -Gharib, Imam Gharib Mirza's tombstone, has been ransacked. But the but the but the good news is this tomb is in good condition. And but here what I have done is basically made it abstract. On the one hand, we have the the floor pattern which people will recognize is from the Ismaili Center, and then on the other hand, uh, we've got the the wall of the of the tomb. But then the actual tomb is represented by a table, which is what I was trying to say earlier, that the table and the chairs became part of our show. And you, you leave it to the audience to imagine the actual tomb. Uh, I could very well have left the tomb in there. But, but um, so uh, yes, I'm sorry if I, I rushed too much. Uh, I was worried about the time and wanted to make sure I leave enough time for you. <laughs> so uh, we could take a question if you would like. Um, uh, any any other? This is the Qajar uh, image of the of uh, the of Fateli Shah, the renowned uh, monarch, who um, who uh, uh, gave the title to Aga Khan after Imam Khalilullah was assassinated, right? This I've talked about long enough. No, the abstract, yes, yes, the panier, the skirts, the French skirts, abstract. Um, did anybody want to ask a question about any other pictures? I don't know if I have any questions come up so far that you want uh, to pause yeah, here and ask a few questions. But not about the picture so far. So the ones that okay. I have received, I would keep it for the end. Fine. Okay, okay. This one. This one. I hope is clear that we had Ivanov and Corbin uh, encounter each other with Freya. Uh, the map maker, right? The network of castles. It's quite amazing. The network of castles extends over Syria. I didn't make it to Syria, but of course I went to visit Alamut and Lamsar. And I must tell people when it's safe to go there, it really is not very high to climb Alamut. Um, this I, I hope you understood, which was the science of letters. Um, this one here is a. This one here is actually a document. I found of the Fatimid uh, soldier, which you can find uh, the Institute of the Monde Arabe in Paris held a brilliant uh, exhibition. And this is where I found that page of a soldier. Uh, and you will see that the actors were made to move uh, in this in this march, but there were there was a co there was a juxtaposition of animation and um, real uh, choreography from the actors, right? Um, uh, I can't quite read the Kufic script, but anyway, this uh, is the esoteric uh, esoteric rendering of the story of the sun and the moon um, as a lesson. Here, if you go into more detail, you could talk about uh, what the Imam says, which is he is the mazhar or the epiphany. One cannot look directly at the sun because uh, one would be blinded, uh, but it's in the same way Allah is beyond the beyond, beyond knowing. It is through the light uh, of the sun that we get to know the moon. So it is through the light of Allah we get to know the Imam. And uh, so the Imam can be considered a manifestation of uh, divine nur. Um, I'm just going, I'm going slightly, I'm going backwards obviously, but I hope um, uh, Madia is actually uh, a uh, and became a naval a naval uh, town which was a strategic place for the imams and they um, they had established very good relationship uh, ships with sicily and in fact if you go to sicily to a cathedral in a town called cefalu you can find fatimid artwork in the roof of uh, uh, the cathedral so there was a kind of exchange of artisans between the fatimids and uh, the king of sicily here are the seven sleepers. Anything else you want to add here? The lighting is very precise. That's what I normally would say about this. You see the lighting over the poets. Uh, it's kind of what you call dance theater lighting where everything is lit from the side. And that means that the actors had to be very precise in their movements and it was all choreographed. You can't do a lighting rehearsal in one day and then open the show. We had a whole week of uh, technical rehearsals, which included the sound and lighting. And speaking of sound, you know, the actors were mic'd and every line was uh, uh, registered in a mixer, not just a genera general uh, sound system. So when you watch the video, the, the sound is, thank God, very clear. Um, and the lighting is quite precise. 
the, the painting the painting is quite famous and so we were able to uh, find that in our research and recreate it on stage um, this is Nasser Khusru and we actually projected a, a manuscript painting onto the pages. Later on in episode seven, we had this book represented Hazi, uh, Sultan Mahmoud memoirs. And then an actor played the role of Somerset Mom, who was uh, the one who uh, uh, wrote the preface to Sultan Mahmoud memoirs. This I hope was clear. Yeah? Yes, sorry, they were clear. Okay, Sava, you're on Salima. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, stop share. If you, yes, please stop sharing. Thank you um, very much, Hafiz. And I, I've also got some slides um, to share um, and hopefully some other uh, photographs. Um, it's always so, like, I, I'm always blown away, even though I was part of the production process, but to actually see the final uh, product on the stage and I hope that we've managed, uh, that many of you who've joined the webinar today managed to watch the nine minute clip um, that you would have received a link to the clip. And if you haven't seen it, then um, you know, make sure that, that, that maybe you, you take a look afterwards. It'll, it'll make um, a lot more sense uh, because we wanted to watch that clip all together. And I think that's just a point that I want to make about theatre. I mean, I'm, it's great that we're doing this Zoom live um, it's not pre-recorded. It means that anything can happen, um, and and that's also the the, the kind of heightened um, tension that you get with theatre and live performance. Um, and I think with it, it's a real uh, relationship with the audience and the actors and and everyone behind um, the, the stage. And we really wanted to watch the clip with you because the other thing that you get from live performance is that it's a collective experience and it's really i think there's so much energy and power that comes from that collective viewing that you don't get if you're an individual sitting at home watching something through a screen and there's there's a lot more distance um there and and you know actors any actors you speak to will always attest to this you know a lot of the energy of their performance depends on that relationship that they have with the audience that day um, and but we couldn't watch it with you. It, it, I think it was it, it was not uh, technically a, a great experience to watch it via Zoom. So hopefully some of you've seen uh, nine minutes. And, and there was a question that somebody sent to me in the chat earlier about whether um, is there somewhere they can watch more than the nine minutes. And we'll hopefully talk a little bit about that at the end. Um, I. Um, wanted to uh, talk about really three things um, in, in the time that I have. Um, firstly, a little bit about what a producer does, um, a theatre producer, and, and Hafiz has alluded um, to some of this. Um, secondly, I wanted to just um, talk about the ingredients that make up what I call a Hafiz Kamali production, because I do think there is something that is a Hafiz Kamali production. It's not just particular to Alita Karim. Um, and, and so I wanted to spend a few minutes uh, talking about that. And um, thirdly, to um, talk about Alita Karim as an act of devotion, which um, I really think that it was. And, and that, I think, you know, everybody who was involved, um, you know, again, I, I think that was, it was such a privilege for us to be part of uh, this kind of particular uh, type of, of tribute. Um, and I wanted to also echo um, Hafiz's um, thanks. There were a lot of, you know, although it's him and I here doing this uh, duo, there were a lot of people uh, involved and, and we wouldn't have uh, got this uh, production uh, onto the stage and then on a, on a US tour if it hadn't been for many, many, many uh, volunteers, um, you know, and, and professionals uh, who, who helped uh, make it possible. Um, I wanted particularly to thank, um, because although we're showing you pictures from the US tour, the development of the production really took place in the UK. And we always wanted and hoped for a UK performance. We even had a team looking at theatres in the UK. We did auditions in the UK in the hope that we would have that UK cast. Um, and um, we were very uh, much supported by the um, Ismaili Council in the UK, who gave us very generously uh, Old Ealing Jamaat Khanna, the Eladen Hall, for those of you who remember 
Ealing Jamaat Khanna in Larden Hall. Um, you know, we had Larden Hall as our rehearsal studio and uh, production office. Um, and that that was, I think, really special to be rehearsing this play in particular in a Jamaat Khanna um, space. And um, Larden Hall had the most fantastic floor under the red carpet, which uh, Hafiz discovered and said, we've got to pull up this carpet. And so again, we had volunteers pulling up the carpet and then very lovingly, some of them sanded uh, and polished um, the floor and it made it a great space for the actors um, and, and, and everyone who was working on the play. It was a sort of dance uh, studio and, and it, you know, it really helped uh, get us off on a good, on a good start. This is the poster and the front, well, the, 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 uh, the identity of Alita Karim, which was then used, you know, on the poster, on the tickets, um, you know, on the lovely concertina flyer that I have here um, and program, which I think you received the PDF of. Um, and right from the get go, you get this impression of um, the intimacy that Hafiz, I think, the right, and Hafiz was the writer as well as the director, although we had a screenwriter work on it with us, um, you know, this, this was, a, he was the director and the writer. And I think we spoke about, um, you know, was it irreverent to just put the names Ali and Kareem and no Hazrat, no Imam? Um, in fact, we, you even wanted to pair it back even further, Hafiz, and call it A to K. <laughs> That's how familiar and close you wanted to be with um, your uh, imam um, and, you know, and to convey that. Um, but, you know, I think we settled on Ali to Karim, the full, full names, but even that is very familiar and affectionate um, and intimate. Um, and you can see that the, the identity of the poster, we had um, Nazira Laku helped us find um, a great uh, typographer and font designer and we even have this Kufiko font um, designed which looks from far away or somebody you know doesn't know uh, you know it's kind of reminisce of Kufic style calligraphy but it's not actually Arabic it's it's English and you can read all 49 names of uh, of the imams there and um, you know so that idea of repeating the names of the imams and the, the whole silsila of the imams was very much uh, you know a kind of motif um, through the whole play and you see that even visually here. just want to show you the cast and crew um, and all the volunteers at um, our first uh, venue which was the Redondo Beach Performing Arts Centre in LA. Um, it's to give you a sense of, of the numbers of people uh, that were involved and we went as Huffy said to seven cities in um, Los Angeles uh, in uh, the USA uh, Los Angeles was just the first and I think probably had close to 500 volunteers um, who helped uh, you know get that tour um, uh, on, on the road so this is just uh, showing you the, the numbers of people who were involved um, um, before I just um, talk about what a producer does um, just to and I'll come back to this, I think, at the end when um, talking about the play as an act of devotion. I think um, ITREB UK wanted to explore through the Heritage series this relationship between faith and culture and, 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 and heritage and, 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 you know, even the arts. And I think this quote by Hazri Mam um, that he made um, uh, at the opening of the Word of God, Art of Man, um, Quran and its Creative Expressions Conference, which was um, held at the Ismaili Center in 2003, I think really expresses that well. And maybe that's something that we can come back to in the discussion. Um, whatever its vernacular forms, the language of art, more so when it is spiritually inspired, can be a positive barrier transcending medium of discourse, manifesting the depths of the human spirit. Um, it's a really powerful quote for me and, and um, you know, uh, we'll come back to it later um, as well, I hope. Um, so just, I think um, you've got some idea of, of what it means to be a producer. If it is um, an image of a black tie, red carpet, always 
um, speaking with the people who have the money, that, that isn't quite the image I'd like you to have in your mind when you think about a theatre uh, producer. Um, really, a theatre producer is someone who does anything and everything. Um, and I've put a list here of different kinds of activities, and it's not to say that the producer does them all uh, himself or herself. Um, this was, you know, very much uh, something that a producer is responsible for, but there are many, many people uh, professional and and uh, you know volunteers who were involved to support this work so it's everything from researching working uh, with the writer and the director on the script research and um, the workshopping process which took us over a year actually before we had a script uh, in our hands that we were happy with um, scheduling um, organizing the casting and auditions uh, budgets is a you know a big part of it and really keeping the production on budget and on time both uh, as uh, Farouk Muki I think if he's on this webinar will probably um, uh, support me in saying was a nerve-wracking element of, of this we didn't know whether we would be able to keep it on budget and also on time because it was it was a it was a really um, a kind of creative process that we needed to allow um, to take its time to actually fully um, develop. Um, uh, so yeah, here are a number of different um, things that a producer does, and if there are any budding uh, producers on the on the on the webinar, happy to to talk about it um, a bit later. Um, what else was I responsible for? Well, definitely feeding and feeding and watering. I think that was a big part, you know, of any producers. Uh, uh, job or production office. It's always making sure people are fed and watered, that the director has the right number of espressos and uh, anyone who's worked with Huffies, you know that one uh, one too many you pay for and also not too not enough is you also pay for. So you've got to get the right balance of, of espressos uh, into the director. Um, and uh, but actually it was it was really working on the um, I think a lot of my time at the beginning, the first year that, that I started working with Huffies was very much about this um, scripting and uh, devising process. And that's something that we'll come back to when I talk about what is a Huffies Kamali uh, production, because I think um, this is very much not all um, directors work in this way, but I think, um, you know, whilst Huffies had done a lot of research, he had a lot of material, um, he, he knew what he wanted to convey in the, in the play. We didn't have a script. And so we worked with actors. In fact, this is the group of actors that finally came on tour with us. But before that, we had another group uh, of actors um, really improvising and devising um, theatre and, and going through a very creative and physical uh, kind of workshopping process and then working with the screenwriter or the playwright and um, um, Hafiz uh, and myself till we finally had, uh, had a script that everybody was, was happy with. Um, so I'm just showing you, this is Larden Hall, uh, the Ealing Jamaat Khanna, and you can just make out that lovely wooden floor that was under the red carpet. Um, and you can see on the far wall, um, episode one, two, three. So on the wall, the actors would be able to see, visualize each act or episode of the play. This is a reading uh, of the play script. So you've got actors here, you've got the set designer, stage assistant stage manager, Puppies in the background. Um, you needed, even though we were in rehearsal mode, we didn't have real props, but we had to have dummy props. So you've got this styrofoam horse. The horse makes uh, an entrance a few times in Alita Karim, and there's some motifs of horses and birds, and I'll ask you about that as well uh, in a minute, Huffies. Um, and on the on the right here, Damien, uh, one of the poets. Um, and, uh, you know, props, uh, hiring, you know, the, the prop maker, working with the set designer to um, think about, we were a touring production, we wanted to be in a library, how do you transport all of those books from one city to another? So here at the bottom, you've got um, these more lightweight uh, prop books that were made very light and easy to carry. And so we had a combination of the, the uh, lightweight prop books some old books that we bought um, from, from a lovely uh, historical bookshop, um, and then actual projections 
of books. So here you've got Dar al Hikmah or the, the library, um, um, and you've got a combination of the uh, actual real books and the projections um, on the back there, which made it a bit easier. Um, just um, talk a little bit about um, costumes. And we had uh, Kimi Nakano, who was a Japanese uh, costume designer, and Matt Dealey, the set designer. Both of them worked together on the set and the costumes. And um, again, it wasn't to try and do something that was completely sort of Eastern or um, Asian, it, you know, very much a kind of um, number of different ideas and, and, and styles. As you can see, Huffy's already mentioned various theatre conventions and genres um, that were being used uh, in Alita Karim. Um, and we wanted the actors, they all had a very neutral uh, white, uh, well, unique uh, jeans from uni Uniqlo, uh, white jeans and, and a white top, so very neutral base. And then they would add these various elements, so whether it was a, a cloak or a turban or a um, you know, an atlas uh, printed um, um, kind of gilet here that Nasser Khusro um, was wearing. And hey, Salima. Hey, hey, Salima. Hi. Hi, can I just point something out? Yeah. Please. Yeah, no, uh, I think we, um, I just point out a couple of things which are kind of interesting. On the left there, you have the image of the professor and we took it, uh, there's a kind of image of a Shakespearean uh, professor from classical theater with those ruffles and so on. And then uh, in a close-up, you might be able to see at the bottom, there are these formulas, E equals MC squared. And so that was a kind of caricature of a professor. So we had some costumes that were drawn from Western theater. Yeah. The, the second one in the middle of, our, of this sketch is a lovely uh, Egyptian uh, calligraphy and so on uh, imprinted. And again, on the right, uh, the poet with the gilet and so on, the flower, that came from the poets from uh, Persian manuscript paintings, which are all those very romantic uh, Leila Majnu style. And then on the right, the Nasser Khusru one is based on uh, uh, the some of the designs you might find in the Pamirs in Tajikistan. Yeah, in fact, I've got um, a, a clip here of the um, ah yes, perfect the process of making the, um, the the beautiful patterns, the gold uh, kind of patterns, which were screen printed onto silk, um, and then also finished by hand. If you can all all see that, so it was quite a laborious. Um, process, I mean a loving uh, process as well, a labour of love here again at Larden Hall. I don't know what we would have done if we didn't have this fantastic space. Um, you can see it being blow dried, dry, and one of the dyes wears this fantastic green silk robe with this beautiful uh, pattern again. They're not patterns that were just made up. They were all very much inspired by what you find uh, either uh, existing in, uh, you know, uh, architecture or, or, or like Hafiz was saying through manuscript paintings. This was the um, astronomer wore these stars on his beautiful blue cloak. Um, this is uh, not such a great picture, but I didn't have any others. And it's just to give you a sense. So as Hafiz was talking about, we would get these, we have these fantastic theatres. The US is so lucky that it has the most amazing um, theatres, um, you know, in, in, in each city, even the university theatres are usually um, fantastic to work in. Um, this is what a typical um, kind of tech rehearsal will look like with the lighting. Uh, designer and sound and projection um, projection team and Huffy's there working as well with the assistant stage manager who would have cued um, the the um, the lighting and sound for the show. Um, okay, so on to just talking a little bit about um, and I, I I I've taken liberty here, Huffy's, because I know this is not something that you would uh, naturally speak about, but I think for, for me it's really important because. As a Jamaat or a community, we don't 
we're starting to see that we have a lot more, um, you know, uh, um, artists, um, a lot of talent in, in the community, um, people who are doing things uh, professionally um, in a number of different um, uh, kind of artistic uh, areas. But I think in theatre, you know, we don't have as many um, 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 actors and directors and writers. And this is something that you've been committed to your whole life. Um, I think that... Um, you know, you are one of our um, our masters or our theatre, you know, practitioners that that um, um, you know others will follow in your footsteps, um, inshallah. But I, I I worked with Hafiz. I was an actor in the ensemble in Conference of the Birds uh, in London um, over twenty years ago, and um, then we worked again on Ali to Karim. And I think through both those experiences, and I I was in the audience for Island of Animals. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say that you always employ this this way of working with actors in a very creative and organic uh, kind of way to devise the production. Um, you you could see already from the pictures that Hafiz was showing you that there's this sort of mix of abstract. Um, it's very experimental. Um, um, using uh, it's not a kind of realism that that Hafiz uh, favors, and he he also mentioned I think. Um, finding designers who would also um, understand that sensibility and aesthetic um, and we didn't find them that easily I mean I, you probably have forgotten but the first set designer we had to ask to leave because actually <laughs> he didn't get you he didn't get you at all um, and um, you know it's a particular kind of way of working and I'd say that you are inspired by other theatre masters, so whether we think of the Polish director Grotowski um, or the great uh, director Peter Brook, uh, who also directed Conference of the Birds and um, was very much about a, a kind of universal language um, of drama. I think for, with, for me, Grotowski is about, um, you know, very much using the actor's body as an instrument to communicate. And I think that idea of physical theatre is something that really comes through. And all of you who watched the clip will will get that sense um, and equally from some of the um the pictures you see the actors are like acrobats almost in the circus and very high um energy um and i think it would be unfair to describe your works as just kind of fusion of east and west because i think for me what i what i what, what i was able to witness and be part of was really although you borrow borrow genres from popular culture and references that a European um, audience will, will very much uh, understand and know equally, um, you know, you'll borrow genres and tropes and ideas from, from that, that, that Asian and, and Eastern and other audiences um, will be comfortable and familiar with, but you create something new um, from that. And um, um, then there's that sort of reference to dance, theater and that very kind of precise uh, in terms of movement. Um, I think as well as there being the kind of popular culture which comes into it, you've also got this very kind of uh, sort of reverence and relationship with tradition and heritage. Um, and I, I could go on, but I know my time is also running out. So I'll just move on to some pictures where I can talk about these ideas a little bit more. Um, this could have come into the next bit, which is about devotion and an act of devotion, but it's again just to show you the type of the way of working. So you've got, you know, we, we were surrounded in the rehearsal space and even before in the script writing space with images from books, books, books. I mean, not only was the play set in the library, but the creative process was like being in a library. And so you have here this beautiful manuscript or, um, image and, and Hafiz, just remind me where it's from. I can't oh, it's remember. Iraq, Iraq, very early in, from Iraq, 8th century. 8th century. So you've got this beautiful kind of um, physical gesture of, of, um, this, of devotion, of presenting an open book. And then on the right here, you have the poets um, who are using their hands in that kind of gesture of the open book. Pega in the back with a book. Um, and, you know, so all of these ideas and, yeah. Go on, no, please say something. And, no, and I was just, a thought just occurred to me is that it's an act of devotion. It's our, but it's also, uh, forgive me, but I'll get a little intimate here. It's also our memani, you know, the same gesture we perform. So uh, the whole production, Ali to Karim, was um, our devotional act 
to uh, Molana Hazrima. Offering, yeah. offering a tribute to all the Imams and offering uh, our devotion to the Imam. Yeah. Um, so these are the actors who also had to get physically very ready. They would spend their time before rehearsal. Um, you know, they needed to also have a bond between them. It's like a kind of football um, match. You know, all, the, all of the players have to, to work in, in concert and harmony with each other. And so there was, you know, a lot of, of bonding and um, kind of physical um, work that, that they went through. Uh, here you can see the rehearsal really getting physical. I think that's Dina executing cartwheel. Um, the chairs, very much the chairs and tables were very much part of the set design. Um, still in Laden Hall. Yeah. Papers, papers, papers running, uh, raining down from the heavens. Yes. With the uh, praises of Hazrat Ali. Um, and yeah, you just see the energy of, of the performance, which was really important. And those theatres in the US are not small, they're big. So, you know, they've got to be able to reach the person in, in the, the stools, in the circle, in the back row. Um, and so you go from that scene in Laden Hall, and this is the exact same um, scene here with, with the actors um, in the, in the uh, left-hand um, corner. Um, actually uh, looking at a copy of Farhad Daftari's The Ismailis and their, their history and doctrines. Um, um, I think Hafiz has talked about this, but I, again, another ingredient I think is that intertextuality. It's a poetic license. So here you've got three figures who are, who are real people from history, but they never really met each other, but here they are at the foothills of Alamut um, um, describing in their own voices, um, you know, that, that whole experience uh, in, in history. So it's poetic license, but like the, and that intertextuality of, of bringing different people and ideas together. Um, and I think, um, you, you know, there are a number of different characters. We've talked about the poets, the map maker, the astronomer. He also had these two uh, comical characters, Didi and Gogo. Um, another intertextual element, Didi and Gogo are two characters. Those of you who know Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, um, they, they were the two uh, characters in, in, uh, from Beckett, but we borrowed them and they helped to move the play along. They helped to bring some levity and lightness um, to some of the... Uh, of the scenes as well. So I think that's another um, uh, kind of ingredient of a Hafiz uh, Kermali uh, production. Um, so just to quickly talk about the devotion side, um, and I do hope that um, everyone gets to see the play. We may not have a live uh, collective experience of it, but we are hoping that, that, that you will get to see the full, full version, the, 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 the video that we have. Um, you'll notice when you watch it that every scene has, you, it's like the play is, is like a, a long prayer. The entire play is a prayer, two hours and 40 minutes uh, of, of devotion. Every episode has um, a verse of du'a, um, meaning of du'a. Uh, it's like the philosophy of du'a. Um, there are references from the Holy Quran, from Hadith, um, and constant um, zikr, constant um, um, zikr and remembrance. So like I told you, showed you in the poster, you've got the names already from before you arrive, you're in the foyer and you see the 49 names. Um, but throughout um, the play, the silsila of the 49 imams, um, you know, is progressively uh, the, each episode we go through, that silsila gets longer and longer until the last episode where all 49 names are, are recited. Um, there's Ginan, Kasida, uh, poetry. Um, and just, um, you mentioned Hafiz a little bit when you were speaking about the Zahir um, and Bathin elements. And I, I don't know if you want to come in here um, uh, briefly just to talk about that. And I, I can pick it up as well after you. Well, one of the elements is always to point out that there was um, the notion of Nure Nabuwa, the light of prophethood, 
who is the, the prophet is uh, responsible for delivering the message. And then there's Nure Imama, and it's the Imam who is responsible for interpreting the message. And so very early on, we established that, that principle. And then um, throughout the play, for example, when the, when the poet teaches the students in the uh, Daryl Hikmah session of wisdom um, about the Quranic, well, about the esoteric lessons, uh, and then later on, Hassan bin Sabah teaches the, the disciples about the levels of initiation. We're always, we're always pointing out or remem reminding the audience about the Ismaili philosophy. And also uh, later on when uh, Ghazali debates Hassan Sabah and so on. So it's a constant um, reminder that uh, once you have this principle, it was underlying the entire ideology of the play. You know, as a director, you have a concept and then that guides your work in every direction, sets, costumes, props, lighting, the gestures of the actors, the choreography. You have to have that, you have to have that guiding principle, right? And our guiding principle was um, the light of Imamat, uh, everlasting, like it will be in that, in, that ver in that text you will read at the end, the Kuistani text. And so the light of Imamat and the role of Imamat as a, um, the one who interprets the faith with our will. And in a way, I guess, if you interpret these gestures, uh, this is, these are angels, these are uh, murids prostrating before the angels and so on, offering uh, uh, an act of devotion. And so their physical gestures have meaning. And mostly, as you said, um, I didn't mean this uh, necessarily always um, deliberately, but sometimes it's a subconscious thing where where you're performing with actors and then you, you have an idea. One thing I would point out is it's truly a collaboration. I might suggest an idea, then an actor would um, suggest another one. Um, so it's A plus B, and then finally you have C, which is, it's neither my idea nor your idea, but it's our idea. So the art of collaboration, uh, working in, in a group, in an ensemble. We were very fortunate to have an ensemble uh, Damien, one of our lead actors, actually knew all the names of the imams by heart. Well, early on in rehearsal, and and to this day, they continue to call us and write to us, reminding us of how 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 special this event was. And I think the reason it was so special was because everyone uh, understood how devotional the production was, and that link of religion and drama goes back centuries. I so think that, also. Yeah, I think for me also it was that you have, there were so many layers of meaning and I think we weren't, we weren't sure that we would get to that, but that for me is a really a mark of, of, of good storytelling. Um, so you had Zahir and Barton in that sense as well, because there, were, there, were, there was meaning for a general audience, for different age groups, if you wanted, or you were just interested at the level of entertainment, this was a visual kind of feast. Um, for the senses and you could be entertained. If you were interested on the level of history and narrative, um, then you had that, the level of poetry. Um, I think if you were an Ismaili in the audience, it was a whole nother level uh, of meaning because this was our tradition. This is our tradition, our heritage um, and our spiritual practice and devotion, which we could um, access uh, on the stage. And so I think also depending on your own level of knowledge and understanding, then you would access um, the play in a different, at the different level. So you talk about the collaborative process with yourself and the actors, but I think it's always, and that's the element of, of live performance as well. It's the audience that brings, you know, an, another meaning um, to, the, to the text and, and to, the, to the play on the stage. And I think that's when you know that you have a really powerful um, story to tell. And I think the point you made about the, the, you know, some of it was subconscious. I think that, yes, the act of devotion wasn't there just because you said, oh, let's do it and let's, you know, bring in all of these elements. This was your inspiration and this was your tribute to the Ismaili Imamat on the occasion of the Golden Jubilee of Molana Hazri Imam. Um, and it became all of our act uh, of, of devotion in that because the, the premise from which you began this was that spiritual inspiration and love and devotion. And I think that was at the core and then that's, that's what allowed everything else to flow, um, flow from it. So I'll stop giving advice and just, cause I know we want to open up for Q and A, just wanted to come back as well. You've got that, that quote 
um, that we had at the beginning, just to keep in your minds about the language of art when it is spiritually inspired. And I think that this play really was Hafiz and, and a lot of that was down to you. Um, and it's, it's through that inspiration then that you can see this depth um, of, of human spirit. Um, you already mentioned, and, and I was talking about the ingredients of a Hafiz Kamali production here, you've got a, a, a heritage story, a story from our tradition about Pier Shams, but told in this black and white um, silent movie style. So it brings kind of elements of comedy, uh, but also, uh, uh, you know, it, bring, it brings some uh, entertainment value because it's something that we recognize, we can laugh at, but then we get to learn, uh, you know, a, a story or an anecdote from, from our heritage at the same time. And all these visual prompts help you to remember um, these stories, um, some more uh, kind of fables or, or legends here with the birth of Imam Ali um, at the Kaaba. I won't stay too long because I know we need to, to move this on. Is, um, no, Hafiz yes. showed you this beautiful, go sorry, on. Sorry, Salima, just go back one. Go back, all right. Yeah, this is just an image of uh, how Hazrat Ali was born in the Kaaba and it could really be like our nativity play where we tell the story of the birth of Christ. And uh, the, I would love it if the young children watching or parents get their children to enact a scene like this where I never knew and I, it was through my research that I discovered that Hazrat Ali was actually born in the Kaaba. And so this is, this is a nativity play that could be enacted by uh, the Beit al -Ilm. The next one is, um, sorry, uh, go ahead. Ah, yes, my dear, again, pray, uh, prostration. Yeah, see here with this physical gesture, and we, we couldn't, one of the challenges we had is that we're telling the history of 1400 years of Imam, but we couldn't have an actor playing the Imam. We weren't going to portray the Imam. So there were so many different devices used to help the audience believe that the Imam was there, or the, the, this was the story of Imam al Mahdi. Um, the Greek chorus came, and then eventually they bow and they prostrate uh, in front of the Imam who's landed at Me Media. Um, uh, this is uh, from now we've moved, uh, you know, to, to the, the Sadpant um, period, and you've got um, the exterior of Jamaat Khana in Gujarat, um, and the, the Jamaat is entering. The Jamaat Khanna, um, again, with ways that would have been very familiar for the audience um, to recognize. And now we move to the interior of the Jamaat Khanna, and there's a beautiful um, rendition of a verse from the Bangi Ginan uh, that the Pir Sadhuddin tradition will be very familiar with. And, and really, the audience was just silent um, and then sat as if they were in uh, Bangi for, for a few minutes afterwards. And Hafiz is about this so I won't dwell on it a lot but it's just again you see that culmination of devotion um, you know this was a golden jubilee international uh, production we were we were we were doing this in tribute so that the Jamaat and the audience could celebrate um, the imam at, um, of, of the imam of the time um, so this was very fitting um, and yeah, yeah Hafiz do you want well, this, this, um, this is the Kuhistani quote. Which... Yeah, this is this is what the actors recite at the end of the play. After we actually had a, a moment where we had the performance of the Nasheed, the the they say uh, from Nizari Kuhistani, it is well that you should follow the Imamat, for the light of God is in his pure heart. Through that light, you will be freed from darkness. Follow that light. And may peace be, be and may peace be with you. Yeah. So this was really the guiding principle, the nur of Imamat uh, from Ali to Karim. Fahim, do we have? Uh, we, I, we only have about ten minutes, but do you have a couple of questions you would like to ask? Yeah, I think there are quite a lot of them actually that I would like to that we have received so okay. far. Okay. So well, we we are we are done. This is just a, me saying thank you to Hafiz because really the whole process was transformative for me. Um, my whole engagement relationship with my prayers, with my very, you know, was all very much um, transformed. And um, I have, have you to thank for that. So thank you, Hafiz. No, thank you, Salima. Okay, Fahim. 
it would be wonderful to um, uh, hear for our participants as well and for myself as well how this experience of display has transformed you, you both of you in that way. Salima, you talked about that briefly. Uh, Hafiz, would you would you agree with that as well? That was it in in terms of your your own personality, your own uh, uh, not just as a director but also as a murid. How how was this experience for you in in terms of this? this entire journey to get to a play? Well, uh, no, the very act of spending seven years doing research and going to those sites and then uh, reciting the names of the Imams constantly. Uh, sure, of course, to this day, um, uh, it seems as if this was the one event in my life that I still uh, um, talk about and the one play I would love to uh, perform again uh, live because as Salima says, that's, uh, that makes all the difference. So no, I'm, I'm actually always thinking and trying to find ways in which we can uh, produce the play again. We tried in London, we tried in Dubai, we tried in Canada, but it hasn't uh, been possible. But inshallah, someday after COVID, we might try again. And uh, yes, it's been a, it has always been, a, it's been part of my, my uh, life uh, for the last, God mm -hmm. knows, 12 years or more. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's on a similar track. I know there, the, the question that I have received the most is that, uh, and you guys would have guessed it, how can we see the play now? We weren't there. Um, I want to show this play to my kids who were born after Golden Jubilee so that they can feel connected with history. We have quite a few BAI teachers on the call today who have written back saying that I want to take a part of this in my BI classroom to work with. So in terms of uh, accessibility uh, online, is there a yeah. way or should we give well, them some hope? Yeah, well, one of the things we've been talking about is actually, um, I've broken down the play into five acts and seven episodes. Each act is 30 minutes. And so that's like a, a Netflix um, uh, segment. So we're hoping to get it online in the near future so that the Jamaat can watch it uh, just like they're binging Netflix, you know, 30 minutes at a time. And then Salima had a lovely idea, which is quite even, well, quite daring, which is someday to publish the script so that like the Fountain of Stories, the IIS might have um, Ali Tukarim in script form. Uh, we're not there yet. I would, I would love to be able to uh, share the full length video in these segments of 30 minutes. Yeah, no, I think that, that 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 would be, I think that your this response would have brought many smiles. I, can, I, I can't see their videos, but I trust that this, this would have brought many, many smiles on many faces and we all look forward to viewing that. And we understand it won't be like watching it live in a theater but still having some, some kind of exposure oh. to that. Somebody uh, says she has connections with Netflix and could be happy to help try and air it. <laughs> 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 thank you, but thank you, but we have to be, uh, of course, very discreet. Yes, yes. Uh, in terms of the other question that I had, I think a couple of people w were asking in this lines of uh, journey and destination. So what you have shared in terms of research and what Salima helped us to get our heads around the role of a producer and a lot of background work that you both have shared. Um, it, it's, it's interesting because sometimes, you know, the Sufis would say the, the beauty is in journey to getting yes. there. And sometimes when you reach the destination, you start missing the journey itself. So yes. in, in, in that way, I think that there were a couple of questions around that. Were you guys uh, satisfied uh, with what came out in terms of your expectations, in terms of the background work that you have put in? It might be a difficult question, but um, any, any... No, it's a, very, it's, a, it's a very good question. And uh, Alhamdulillah, shukar Mola, I'm, I'm, I was very satisfied with the results. Uh, everywhere we performed, the Jamaat was um, at the end in uh, standing ovation mode for several minutes and really appreciating the whole production. But um, uh, it, it really was um, very satisfying. But also, as you say, the process is uh, 
is the, what I love most. I love the process of rehearsal the most. It's almost like the night before the show opens, I could just leave town and be happy with the show, you know? So, um, uh, of course, it's, it's different when you watch it in front of an audience, but um, the, the very process was deeply, deeply rewarding because we had a very good ensemble and we had to create things from nothing like Salima was saying we didn't have a script sometimes the leaders would 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 uh, request things to be changed because they were too sensitive so we had to we had we were on the phone with London the leadership in London restaging scenes and then quarreling with the actors but then me promising them that the limitations would make us more creative and indeed we were to the point where then the actors loved the changes and so we were constantly changing the scenes uh, guided by our leaders because they were always afraid of giving any offense and um, but we took that on as a challenge we didn't take that on as a as a, as a, as a uh, as some kind of hindrance because we were creating a new work and when you create a new work uh, you know this there was no such thing in existence right now there is uh, alhamdulillah there's a script there's a video there's an ensemble cast uh, we even have all the costumes in storage, so uh, all hope is not lost. I mean, I think uh, the U.S. Jamaat will remember it in their hearts, and um, and we we all we all will remember it in ours as well. You know, uh, during the the whole process, we were quite quite moved. Uh, I think just in case of time, my last question to Salima, you, and then. Uh, to uh, Tafi's you as well. Uh, in terms of the, uh, like you guys with this play and maybe other works office that you have done, Salima, that you have done, you have inspired many in the Jamaat, not just within the UK, but even beyond uh, Canada and even in many other parts as well. Um, would it be okay, would you would it be possible for you to give a message to those who are um, those who are either wanting to pursue a theater or performing arts as a field or they have it as, as a, maybe as a hobby or as a, something that they like to recreate in their educational encounters like some of the teachers on the call or some educators any any words of wisdom or inspiration for them to end this i don't know about wisdom i i have never and you know ask my family they'll they'll tell you I, I've never managed like Hafiz has to have a kind of this as my full-time career it's it's not easy to make a living um, you end up actually probably spending more than you earn um, they you know really the, these are kind of labors of, of, of love but I'd say hands down out of every experience that I've had in my career and my education, it's always the ones that the, this kind of collaborative and creative process, it's such an honor um, to, to, to have been involved uh, in them. So I think if, if you are um, interested, uh, you know, this is a calling, uh, something that, that an itch you want to scratch, you just, you need to do it. And even if it is that something that you do, uh, on the side, um, you know, it, it, not everyone has the luxury that they can make it a full time. And it's not just a luxury. I think you also um, sometimes choose a life of, of, of kind of hardship as well um, um, to, 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 to go down uh, this path. But it's, um, I think it really uh, do it. It's, it's, it's life, life changing and, and very uh, enriching. And I think, um, I think, Theatre has always, I mean, and most arts always have, has re relied on the generosity of patrons. Um, and, I, and I think that this is something as well that the Jamaat, um, you know, and, and, and institutions, and you can see with all of the work that Hajjumam is doing, um, uh, investing in music, um, in the museum and other art forms, um, you know, art, you know, needs that uh, kind of patronage um, as well. So, um, you know, I think that we, we have a responsibility um, in, in the Jamaat to keep investing uh, in the arts and supporting and creating an environment to nurture and nourish um, that talent um, and it will continue to grow. And, and you know, I, I'd say 20, 30 years ago, there, there were not, that was a handful of, uh, you know, you would know who the Ismaili actors or writers were. And now, now there are hundreds, thousands, dare I say. And, um, you know, it's great. Just it'll keep growing uh, and growing. Hafiz, do you have words, for yeah. words of wisdom? No. <laughs> no, just one quick point, which is that now with COVID-19, 
the uh, act, very act of going into a theater uh, is going to be uh, quite tricky and a lot of theaters in England are now uh, going bankrupt and so on. So we still have to negotiate how you're going to have theater with social distancing. Once that phase is over, maybe in a couple of years, then theater will be uh, viable. In the meantime, I would recommend that people uh, use turn their creativity to making uh, video and film uh, and, and perhaps uh, I would highly recommend film as a field because film is much more rewarding financially, but also, of course, just as competitive, if not more so. Um, so I, I would recommend, the theater is a great passion of mine. And yes, you don't make any, any money unless you have uh, shows back to back constantly. But now with COVID, my projects have been postponed for years. Uh, I would highly recommend people of a creative bent, theater creative bent, to move into film, to, to do research on film schools and to train themselves as film uh, directors and technicians and so on. Thank you so much. Thank you both of you. I think we have received a lot of gratitude for both of you for a number of our participants. You have uh, helped them to relive their memories. Either they were there or they had interacted with uh, both of you in past. For some of them, when they watch the clip and then listen you, uh, hear you uh, say about the play, where they were able to make those connections. I think a lot of gratitude notes. Uh, for uh, taking them on a journey of uh, through history in some ways, which is a difficult one. Where do you stop? Where do you move around? It's a tough one to work around with. But the way the imagination has come out in something tangible, I think it, it was very powerful for myself and for a number of participants on the call. Um, I would again thank both of you for taking time out and we hope that we both can invite you sometime again to listen about uh, other works and also in general, uh, what is the role of art uh, in our society, even in, as a religious community, uh, how do we see that would be an, another important discussion to carry it forward. Our next webinar would be around Quran and how to read Quran as uh, literature. Uh, and how do we engage with that? I hope that would be another exciting endeavor for a number of you who are joining us um, through this webinar series. Once again, uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, thank you for making our evening and this weekend wonderful with this uh, nuggets, thought nuggets that I say uh, that would inspire us for upcoming weeks and months. Uh, thank you, for Thank you for letting us have a trip down memory lane as well. Thank you very much. Fireman, thank you to introduce me.